as a person interested in sustainability, you know, I'd like to see things with at least a hundred year cycle. And if you can't get to that, then we ought to think about not entering into that cycle or figuring out another way to enter the cycle that will last a hundred years. So is there another way to get that stuff out of the ground? Because we need iron um, to make steel, and it's such a huge part of world economy that um, I, I think we do need to study these things and figure them out. And I'm up for it even happen in our area if they could figure it out how to do it sustainably because iron's going to get mined somewhere and there's only so much iron in the world and uh, this just happens to be one of the areas where there is. They're going to dig the stuff up and crush it and get the ore out with magnets. So that, in the grand scheme of mining, that's relatively benign. So um, I think it's probably good that they're looking at it. Um, but they need to be very careful about how they do it and that's going to make it cost more and up to this point other companies have looked at this even just in the 40 years I've lived up here I think this is the fourth time it's been considered three or four and um, they've always just said you know what for what we would have to do it isn't it isn't worth it but as ironing, iron mining resources dwindle um, they they need to find these places. So they're in Australia and Brazil and some places in Europe where these big iron fields were originally laid down, you know, like two to three billion years ago. And no iron's been laid down since. So there's not, it's a finite resource. So every year goes by, it gets more and more valuable as the other iron that already is engaged in mining, you know, dwindles. So I'm just hopeful that the economic, cultural, and scientific communities here and environmental communities can somehow find a way to do this right. Um, I'm highly skeptical, if that's possible. Because I don't want to ruin the upper Bad River watershed. And I don't want to ruin it for the people that live there. And um, if, if I saw that the citizens of the world were being conservative with their resources, you know, managing the iron that's already out of the ground instead of just using it for a little while and throwing it away, I, uh, I'd be more tempted to think that it was worth it. But I can't quite get there. I don't think we've done enough to control our population and or to use the resources that we've already generated to use them wisely. I, I'm just not that tempted to go after it without those other two things being in place. And those are hard things. So I, I'm definitely not pro-mine on this, um, but I am. Um, I think the research is, is helpful. We'll see if it produces anything that I can trust. <laughs> Ultimately, the biggest player in all of this is the tribe. Partly because they will suffer the consequences if this isn't done right, and they have cultural resources that are guaranteed by the federal government to be protected, to be able to hunt fish and subsist in the ceded territories. And right now that includes wild rice. They have the best wild rice beds in the state of Wisconsin there at the mouth of the Bad and Kakagan rivers. and um, they're unlikely to compromise uh, on that.